Welcome everyone. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician here to host the Market Buzz. This show looks at weekly setups across the US market. Using the tools available on stock charts, we'll look for long time frame trades. And don't forget to subscribe to my articles and Twitter feed for more information. So we have ourselves a bit of a stalling market. Um, not really a big problem, but nonetheless, uh, we need to pay attention to what's going on around here. There's a couple of clues that make us wonder. Today, I'm going to cover off um, industry groups that are still performing well, some areas of the market you want, might want to look at. I think the marijuana so stocks are topping, and we're going to go through that quite in depth today. Just what would be a good reason for a sell signal on marijuana? And uh, so not getting caught up in the hype. And as we work through them, uh, actually, some of the stocks will be Canadian because there's quite a few Canadian stocks in that area. Uh, but what I want to talk about is the methodology behind it. We're going to compare it to what happened to Weight Watchers. And then we're, if we get time, we're going to jump into um, some strong ETF scooter rankings and just see what's going on uh, very quickly uh, to, to evaluate the er other areas of the market that we could look at. Okay, so first of all, this is Weight Watchers, and this is how to get this is how to lose portfolio weight. Um, stock breaking down significantly today, dropping about ten dollars or thirty percent. But there's a couple of big clues here that we had, and if you ignored them, they were you know pretty difficult for you to endure. So this stock was a hundred dollars six months ago and is now 20 and again when the trend is over you need some method of exiting so or i need some method of exiting and so what i want to do today is discuss what i like to look for and what we see here on weight watchers is a couple of places where the stock ran up and then fell down and then ran up and then fell down and it's okay for us to go on these rips the problem is we need some sort of clue to exit and i don't like my scooter ranking as an exit tool for this reason in this case the stock ran up very very quickly the scooter ranking was good to help you get in it wasn't so good to help you get out and so the problem we have is when uh when this happens how do we know that it's not just a pullback and, and a wave higher and the right answer is that's very difficult. But the one of the clues I like to look at is this relative strength in purple. And so when relative strength is trending up in something and it's outperforming the S&P 500, that's what makes that purple area go up. It's outperforming the S&P. And then when it starts to underperform the S&P, something is changing. So you have a, a stock that's been outperforming for a period of time. And then that stock stops outperforming. So at some point you have to make a call on have I captured as much profit as I can? And if if you still think there's more profit or if I think there's more profit, then I'm going to continue to hold it. But I need something to kick me out of this stock. And for me, it's not the scooter ranking, although in this case they both coincided. I would prefer to use this relative strength in purple. So something that has been outperforming stops outperforming. And the that trend change where it, where it was something that an institutional investor was looking for outperformance and it stops outperforming, I think you're going to at least change ownership of the stock from somebody who's growth oriented to maybe somebody who's value oriented. So when this stock breaks, and in this case, it was a big two year trend. I think this is right here when Oprah got involved and the stock ran up and then really about 15 months or 18 months, really nice run. And from 20 bucks to $105, pretty smart. But you still need an exit strategy. And the problem with that exit strategy is if you don't take it, you can see that the stock is now down 80%. And uh, for most people, that would be a bit of a problem. Now we look at the PPO, and we see that it made a, a high here, pulled back and then made lower highs in here and never really got its momentum back. I think the biggest thing that we started to learn here was when the when the PPO was heading below zero, um, as as the stock was breaking down, that was like final confirmation. It was actually, you know, this trend line would probably go right under here. That would be an important place. So when we go to a daily version of this stock, let me just go grab it. Actually, I'll just go over here. Uh, 
So what we see here on the daily version is the PPO is staying above zero and then it starts to go below zero and lifts below zero for the entire last half. Um, some stocks aren't quite this orderly. They'll wave above and below zero and, and it's more difficult to look at. But in this particular case, this stock was almost uh, perfectly obvious where the, the relative strength started to make new two month lows the uptrend was broken, the uptrend in price was broken, the scooter ranking was starting to break down. And if nothing else, we need to capture profits. So let's roll into the marijuana names. And again, I have a whole uh, group set up here now. Some of these are set up on the Canadian uh, listings, but it doesn't really matter if they're on the Canadian or US, the, the logic is the same. So what we have here is the scooter ranking on this stock. And again, this is compared to uh, the Canadian market. So in Canada, all of the stocks in the market are in the same scooter ranking. In the US, there's so many stocks that we have broken it out into three different groups, large cap, mid cap and small cap. So uh, a lot of the marijuana names are actually too small to get a, a scooter ranking. So this helps a little bit. But in general, I still want to use the SCTR ranking to get me into the stock. And I want to use something like relative strength to get me out. So before um, the stock was soaring here, we had this relative strength uptrend and you can start to see here it's making, it starts to break down into two month lows and this stock broke down. Now it doesn't seem like much, but the stock went from 12 to eight, maybe 14 to eight very quickly. It was 16 at its high, but these were moving $2 a day um, up in here or 15% per day. And normally that level of volatility is usually the signal that um, either institutional investors are going to have trouble holding it or for sure um, retail investors are, are going to be so hyped up that they think it's just a pullback. Now, in this case, it only lasted a couple more weeks. But again, this was pretty significant. What do we notice about the PPO? It goes below zero here. So now we, we uh, could draw a trend line across the top. And let's just do that. So you could just take this existing trend line. And all of a sudden this starts to break out. So let's just pick somewhere in here. Difficult time, obviously you gap up and that kind of puts it on the chart, but it, it ends up going on a run. And we start to see higher lows develop and the stock starts to move up meaningfully. And as it starts to move up, um, and, and again, all the other names were starting to move up too. So it's this change in, in pressure that we're looking for, we're buying pressure. And so we start to see the stock actually go from a shallow to a more parabolic slope to a high parabolic slope. And sometimes you can try to sell into these top ticks because usually the stock will need time to exhaust itself. Um, and, and then it runs up and it makes a secondary high. And we'll see this on, on weed, um, the canopy growth company stock as well. Uh, so, and, and the ticker symbol in Canada is WEED, W-E-E-D, and in the US it's CGC. But what we see here is this break in this relative strength trend line for about six weeks, and now it's threatening to break this three or four month trend line. We've already broken the trend line in price. We've broken the trend line in momentum. And I know people think these stocks are going to the moon and that's okay. Um, the trick is to try and capture something of the gain so that you don't give it all back. So in this case, it was $20 on this high and it was $8 on this low and it was only a month. So these stocks aren't exactly going to pull back slowly enough to let you out easily. Okay, so we've got this one booked and let's just quickly look at it on a weekly what we see on the weekly is this parabolic surge and that's typically one thing that I would watch for to try and exit. Um, it doesn't usually help when you stay in too long on those. So here we have a volume accumulation, another volume accumulation and another volume accumulation. What we don't know um, is that is this the final high or just an interim high and I know a lot of people believe that these stocks are going to go forever. My point would be none of them make money yet. And so usually the institutions like to be in for the hype phase, out for the um, industry settle out where, where some companies go broke and then other companies buy them. And then the strong names uh, 
head to the top. So here is a case that we see on, on weed that we just saw on Kronos where it had this sudden acceleration and then it goes sideways for a little bit. And again, these, the scale is hard because it keeps changing for each stock based on price. But what you see here is this, this is running up very, very quickly. We break the trend line and then the stock tries a few times to make higher highs. And on these tries, um, here it actually makes a new relative strength high, but we quickly break the trend line. This was also Weed Wednesday, which was the legalization day in Canada. And all of these stocks went for a tumble. So now here we sit, um, the relative strength or the scooter ranking has been starting to weaken in these names and then recently surged again for another month. And now to me, this looks like a big topping structure and I might be wrong. But more importantly than being right or wrong is just making sure you have a defined exit strategy. So in this case, here we are, we have a six week um, low on relative strength. And this stock is starting to um, concern me that it's getting weak, but bigger than that, we have over a one year relative strength uptrend. And if that start, starts to break down, I think that would be a problem for me. So, on these, what we start to see here is this volume profile on the last surge has been a lot less. We don't have as many parties interested. And, and that to me is one of the clues that uh, people are starting to lose interest in the name. Now, if we go to, if we go to uh, the, the weekly chart, what we see on the weekly chart Look at how compressed the numbers are over here, but the PPO is just barely above zero. So I'm gonna zoom in on the last two years, maybe even just two years and six months. And the reason for that is we just wanna try and capture the uh, momentum of PPO. And what we see here is a high, then a lower high, and typically a lower high on the right-hand side, just as your, um, as the right shoulder is formed in, a, in some sort of a head and shoulders top. And in this case, it's obviously a big one. We could perhaps use this little one here, but I don't think we want to watch this stock go anywhere near $60 to $30 before we start to realize that it's breaking out of a topping structure. And so it's this decline in momentum that is pretty important. So let's just draw that in. And again, bouncing below zero usually says to me that this could perhaps be the final high. And I mean, technical analysis is about, um, it's as Carl Swenlund likes to say, it's a windsock, not a crystal ball. But what we see here is momentum getting so weak that it actually went negative. And now it's bouncing up with very little strength and starting to roll back over again. So this stock's been declining for four weeks already. And we're just getting down to the 200. So maybe it, it gets its bounce here and takes off and breaks out to new highs and all that kind of stuff. That could definitely happen. Um, I'm just noticing that we have a lot less volume. And if this relative strength trend, I think I've already got the line thing set. If this relative strength trend starts to break, that would be very concerning to me. But we can also do little ones like this. We can say that when the relative strength trend breaks on a two month basis, you know, these names are starting to show something different and these parabolic surges that it has are also helpful uh, to find exit. So we continue to watch and, and just see that these relative strength systems are breaking down. That's a better place to be aware of. And again, if you wanna play the long-term game, uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, but, you know, waiting for this stock to get down to $30, I think is, is quite a profit. Um, loss if it does in fact get down that far and if you wanted to you could just wait for it to to come back up so anyway we have all of the signs that we had in Weight Watchers whoops this Weight Watchers um, I want to go back to the weekly and what we see here is we had the relative strength start to break down the scooter ranking breakdown full stochastics and the PPO was making lower highs again and especially the second lower high just above zero. So we go back to weed, we're on our second lower high just above zero. We have relative strength uh, still holding up but getting close here 
And again, these are big numbers because look at the compression on this scale. And as this rolls over, now we need to really be focused on this 40-week uh, moving average. And we can see that in general, the stock is held here. So if this doesn't hold, that would be very concerning for me if it starts to drop down hard. Okay, so enough stories on that one. So now let's just quickly go look at some of the other stocks now that we've kind of got our, our uh, system set up. And what we see here is this canopy or this aurora cannabis is starting to um, relative strength wise it's just going flat with the s p for the last two months and if we go to a weekly chart okay we have a little bit of an uptrend here and if that uptrend was to break i think that would be a big um worrisome point for the stock and, and so we're right here at the zero level and again this could turn around and start to accelerate higher and become a much stronger stock. I just think that it's the volume clue that nobody's starting to buy these stocks on the third trip here that I'm more worried about. Here's Afria. This has been a pretty good name. Um, this surge in here, again, you really have to look at the chart because it looks, you know, could be a utility stock, except that the stock is changing so quickly. So the scale here is $5 to $20. And, you know, we have tripped that from, we went from 20 to 5 in 60 days. So this is, or 40 trading days, this is very, very quick moves. And we come off a $5 low, we're at $13 now. We're right at the 200-day moving average. We've got an upslope in relative strength. Scooter ranking is starting to wobble already. So back here, it's strong, wobbles, and then actually starts to break down. Those are all good clues. So the wobbling of the scooter ranking is telling me that the um, persistence of the move is starting to weaken. And we can start to see that the PPO is, is trying to hold up here. But again, no real volume showing up to buy this on the most recent surges. So the way I view it is we've got one, two, and three humps here in volume. And this volume here, this is uh, obviously on the lows. But here on this high, look at how few people started to participate. So I think that's one of the big things for me is the volume isn't showing up on these rallies anymore to pick it up. Now, this is still big, right? This is 10 million to 30 million. But again, we're not getting the same sort of uh, momentum that we want to see. So in this case, it's trying to hold this line. Remember, Kronos has already broken the line. And recently, Kronos has been one of the bigger leaders. So here's can trust and we're on a weekly one here as well and in this case look at the volume last week this thing was up 40 million shares um, you know averaging 13 million shares and yet the the move on the stock came up i you don't expect this big kind of volume in the middle of the run you expect it closer to the end of the run or the uh, start of the run so in this particular case, you can see the volume here, let's call it mid-September, came up. The stock wobbled in here for a few more weeks and then broke down. But the relative strength break is probably the better clue, especially on the weekly chart. That's one for me. But you can again see that the PPO is getting very close to zero here and rolling over. So that's what I would be watching for. Now, Hydropothecary, this is starting to break its uptrend. Relative strength has a six-week uptrend starting to crack. And again, it's this lower momentum that we're starting to see that makes me worry. Now, I could be all wrong, but I think it's important that if you're um, trying to capture profits in these big moves, uh, you know, trying to figure out which stock is going to win in the long term is a very difficult game. So the scooter ranking here still looks much more positive. And if we go over here, um, you know, you've got these sudden surges and they're not a bad place to sell. I mean, if you can get out of this as it goes to $10 or $9 and drops to four, you know, even if you had to play that back and forth every few months, that would be okay. But look at what happened on our momentum on the most recent bounce, barely getting above zero. And it looks like we're already getting a slower histogram this week. Now we've got a few trading days left. Again, the price action on the last week, it broke out, and this week it looks like it's coming back down again. So I would be much more concerned that these are breakdowns rather than breakouts. And I know the news is so bullish. Um, here's the relative strength for the ETF, and the ETF is uh, you know, a pretty good 
average for, for what's going on in the group, but it doesn't really help us with the, um, with each individual stock because you're going to have some leaders that are going to outperform this average. But I think what we're getting now, so we had the trend line here and, and it basically hit this exhaustion spike and then pulled back. And now what we continue to watch again, here was a huge volume and it hardly moved the stock. And since then we haven't done much either. So as this trend persists sideways, I'm a little more hesitant to get on board, um, especially in such a volatile area. Now, you know, if it started to break out to new highs here and wanted to keep going, then maybe I can get involved and set my, top re my stop relatively close. But I really don't want to be involved if it's going to... Oh, I did want to show you the weekly. Um, I really... Uh, don't want to get involved if all of a sudden this upslope and trend is going to break again. Um, and, and on here, the head and shoulders top is quite obvious. And you can see lots of momentum on the first one, a lot less momentum now, and barely above zero here. So, so far, we can see that we're starting to make a smaller histogram. And so that would be a place to be cautious. And again, here in October, uh, we started to make a smaller histogram and Weed Wednesday was October the 17th and what we saw was you know right in here and then literally days before we'd Wednesday surge up and then fell down so this moved 10 bucks in two weeks and you know if you're a trader um, very difficult place to be involved so here we have the left shoulder the head and now we have the right shoulder on significantly lower volume and this is typically a volume profile of a head and shoulders sometimes you'll get more volume on the on the final peak but not so much on the right shoulder okay uh running through so here's some other names and this one recently broke out to a new high unable to hold it even with all of the um, current optimism and so this is starting to to have trouble holding this new high and looks to me like this uptrend is going to break here any day now. Uh, GW, this one's pretty big, so it's trying to surge. This is a like the stock is 180 bucks. It's been up here before. Um, big volume showing up here today, so they might have announced an earnings or something. And this one doesn't look like it's ready to break yet. You can see the relative strength was still holding, um, but you need to be very, very careful. This was starting to pull back a little bit. But if you don't get this, um, I'll, I'll say renewed interest, that would be a problem. And what I want to watch for, you can see the relative strength trend broke here. Um, here was this long one, but you could have also exited on this sudden surge. And maybe that's what we're going to get here today is a sudden surge testing the prior high. Scott's is a fertilizer company, so a little bit different, but basically it's doing what all what a lot of the stocks across the general market are doing, just getting back up to the August, uh, November, sorry, October, November highs. Anyway, this one looks pretty good. The scooter ranking on it, US listing, it's going up into the 75 level for the first time in years, so that's pretty good in a year. Pikes International, this one had a parabolic surge. Um, relative strength was a great clue. And you could see that this sell signal on the relative strength was much better than waiting for the scooter to break down. And now we have the exact opposite. We have it holding way up here. We have a relative strength trend line. And as long as that holds, it's fine. But I wouldn't let it start to get away. And I think the bigger issue is that the volume really isn't coming into the stock. So even though um, yesterday had a big price surge, there was no real um, volume with it. And it was breaking above uh, prior highs. And this long PPO momentum here, I think you draw a line under that. If all three of these start to break, that's probably a clue that you're going to have more difficulty. So I'd watch the relative strength very closely on that one. E plus. Um, this one's already rolling over near the 200-day. Looks like a head and shoulders top to me. This stock uh, was all the rage. I just want to open it up. Um, and the problem is they don't... So you see this double top test, right? Breaks out for one day and reverses and drops it all and the relative strength breaks. So as soon as you get that relative strength break on something that's moving parabolic, to me, that's a great place to at least take some off the table. And this one looks a little better volume wise, at least it's it's got more volume, but the price action is not telling us anything either. So I think I would be hesitant to 
join that party. Um, that one's just holding it. It's 250. I want to go through, um, I want to show you organogram. And organogram is one of the more promising ones. But right now it's testing this double top. And it's got a nice upsloping trend line here on relative strength and another one here on relative strength. And with this, I think they announced yesterday that they had now, they now have supply licenses to every province in Canada for marijuana. And look at this volume surge. So an absolutely massive volume surge. Stock tries to make a new high, 867, 855. And today we're opening lower and closing lower right after this big announcement. So while the news seems very bullish, maybe it could be that the news isn't going to get any more bullish because they've already got supply contracts with them all. And now we need to wait for profitability. So it's a pretty good uptrend here. You're testing this big topping structure. You know, maybe you end up with a right shoulder forming here and it goes on to higher highs. But the volatility of this, again, this is 850, this is four bucks. You're here, you know, a double in in a few months. So I would be more cautious about missing locking in profits than anything else. So if the relative strength started to break here, I'd probably um, exit. And it's the fact that so many of these stocks are doing it at the same time that makes it a little more difficult. So here's Tilray, and you could see this wedge couldn't get any tighter, and the Twitter feed will tell you this thing is going to pop to the upside, blah, 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 um, and, and it could. So you take the trade, but you make sure you have your stop in here tight because if this doesn't continue to go up and it looks like the rest of the stocks are starting to lose their momentum, then I would be more inclined to take profits off and let somebody else hold it for the last five bucks. Abcan. Um, so this, you could just see, you know, a lot of these marijuana names have this sort of structure where the 200 day is now their ceiling and they just kind of die there. Um, just looking for some other ones that are interesting. This gene one has been pretty good. And, and what you see on these, um, you know, this is making lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. And, and yet they're very popular names. And as we continue to roll out, I've got a whole list of of uh, stocks here and you know american cannabis company you think that name would draw a lot of attention but you can just see how the 200 day is a ceiling on all of these stocks anyway hopefully i've made the point so we go back to the weight watchers chart and what i want to show here is you know as this is rolling over up here and you're losing your relative strength on something that was outperforming very very well um, when it starts to break down, and again on the daily, it looks a lot more choppy, but the weekly chart really gives you a clue when these long relative strength trends end, that it's probably a good time to at least take some profits. Um, and if I'm wrong, maybe they continue to accelerate and never do break down, but they look all set up to me to break down. So, and here we have, actually, I better wrap up the show. So thank you for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs live on Wednesdays and Fridays at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 7.30 Pacific on Stock Charts TV. You can also catch replays on the Stock Charts YouTube channel or on Stock Charts TV, which has a running list of technical charting informational shows. Thank you.